Anybody who claims you can win a free beer just by doing a single bar trick is full of garbage. You've got to earn their respect. That's why on Scam School, we've always taught there are three different types of effects. There's openers, tweeners, and closers. Openers ask nothing of your audience. There's something you could perform for yourself in the mirror or be seen halfway across the bar, but it causes them to give you their attention. Then you get into tweeners. This is where you do little things like ask them to remember a card, provide value with a good magic trick. Hopefully, by the time you get to a closer, somebody's excited. You've spent 15 minutes entertaining them, and of course, they would love to buy you a free beer, give you the girl's phone number, get you past the velvet rope, whatever your MacGuffin is. So in this case, we've collected some of the best openers in the 10 years and 600 plus episodes of Scam School to date, beginning with one of the flashiest ways, I guess I mean that literally, by eating a ball of fire. This is something you could do like when you're at a buddy's barbecue and he's got tiki torches, you can actually reach in and pluck out a part, part of the flame and it's popping directly in your mouth. You want there to be a lot of flame to cover what it is you're pulling out of there. You want it to be a surprise. That's the heart of all great magic. Make absolutely sure that you have 100% cotton balls. If there's any synthetics in there, you're gonna have melted synthetics, like melted nylon on your tongue. Second of all, you'll notice that the jumbo cotton balls are entirely too big. Depending on your comfort level, you can take off into a half to a third or whatever. A lot of times I'll break them into two, but if you pull them apart, you get lots of these feathery tendrils. The more feathery tendrils you have, the better and the more amorphous it looks when you grab it. So you reach forward, you touch it, it ignites, and you pull it out long enough for everyone to see. And if you kind of move it left to right, you'll have a little bit of time before you burn your fingers. <laughs> and then right as it starts to get warm in your fingers, then you put it in your mouth, and when this sticks to your tongue, your tongue can draw it in and close your mouth on it, it immediately goes out. Think about this, anytime you need to light any torch on fire, you can do it with panache, looking like a gunslinger. I'm gonna teach you not one, but two stupid things you can do with matches. There we go. Wow, that's epic. Then there's part two. Oh. We're gonna start off with the easier of the two. And it's okay. way easier to use paper matches because paper matches produce much less flame. You'll actually never even really feel the heat at all. The longer you wait for it to burn, the weaker the wood between the match and the head is, and the likelier it is that the match head will pop off and actually burn on your tongue. Once it's lit, give it just a couple of seconds. You can keep the flame tiny and just wipe it right away like that. If you want to make it look good, all you need is a lot of saliva. Turn it upside down to get a little more of the match head burning, and then just wipe it down in front of your tongue. If you twist it, you're going to get more of the hot part of the match head wiping around your tongue, so it'll feel a little bit warmer, but you have a much more increased chance of actually putting out the match. Each of you guys grab a match. All right, tongue out, and just wipe it down. Look at that, dude! Ah! Ah! Wipe it down. Ah! To light a match with the teeth, and that's so cool. That's such a Clint Eastwood gunslinger thing to do. A couple of things you want to do is, first of all, always get Strike Anywhere matches. Make sure they're Strike Anywhere. You can actually, any place you can get enough friction to heat up that white part will immediately light up. Now, the amazing thing is that you can actually get that white part hot enough to ignite just with the surface area on the very front of your teeth. Most of them have very little of the white tip at the end. Pick out the ones that have big white tips on the end. Guy. Second thing you want to do, you want to make sure that you get enough friction to actually light that white part of the match. So for that, what you got to do is make sure that your teeth are dry. So take a napkin and dry them off. The drier they are, the better it'll work. And find a niche that covers as much of a surface area as you could possibly get. You want pressure. You want maximized surface area. Drag it crossways across the teeth like that. Actually, I'm going to hold back. I'm going to make yeah. you guys try the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Couple of things to remember. There is a chance that that white match head will pop off in your mouth or fling over to someone else. So make sure wherever you're doing this, you have proper safety yeah. control. Yeah. 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 Absolutely, you will get burned trying to learn how to do this. Make sure you don't send the house on fire. Make sure you actually have fire extinguisher there. Take proper safety precautions. Don't get me wrong, it's cool to put a match out on your tongue, but what if you want to be more like a 1990s Surge commercial? Like extreme. Martin. Martin, how you doing? Good. Are you a smoker? I'm not. I'm not a smoker either. <laughs> Kids, anything is better than smoking. So put out those cigarettes by any means possible. Ready?
It's not too difficult. Blah. Here's what I recommend. While you're learning this, go ahead and suck on an ice cube first. Well, first of all, it's very, very hot. But the thing is, if you took a thermometer and stuck it in that heat, it would not go instantly from zero to 2,000 degrees. It would take time. We call that thermal lag. That's how fire eating works. This is the same principle on a short level. If you were to take the cigarette and stab it right near your skin, it will burn it very, yep. very badly, right? Same thing on your tongue. If you'd open your tongue, stick it out and go, ah, it'd burn it very badly. What we're doing is we're maximizing the amount of area that we're hitting by tap, 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 tapping. The combination of all the saliva on your tongue and the fact that you're hitting all these areas will mean that no one part of your tongue will get burned. Now remember, it will taste like ass. You're burning ash onto your tongue, but you can wash it down with a cold drink or something, right? You don't want to have a ton of ash. The less ash you have, the easier this is going to go. Once it's out, you'll be able to do this kind of uh, 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 yeah, yeah. move yeah. so that the, the persistence of memory, people will, will imagine that you're going like that, when in fact you're going tap, 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 tap. Didn't work? Easy. No problem. Just like that? When you first start doing this trick, it's not going to look terribly impressive. You're probably going to tap 8,500 times all over your tongue so you don't get burned. Over time, though, you'll learn to tap slower and slower to where it starts to really look like you ought to be all burned up by the time the thing's over. Now the answer is yes, that exact same principle that works with a cigarette will work with an entire cigar, and yes, it is more impressive. You just have to taste more of that awful ash on there. And before any of you guys ask, we should give credit. If you haven't seen them, check out The Human Chimney and The Human Jack-O-Lantern, one of the perennial favorites on Scam School. If your goal is to get people's attention, you don't have to be outrageous with it. Sometimes you can casually flex your finesse with stuff like this. You know how to roll a quarter? No. Nope. Rolling a quarter is one of the best things you could do to learn to build up an affinity for coin. If you're doing vanishes and stuff and you want to make them look good, then it helps to know the way coins are going to roll over the topography of your hand. When you practice rolling a quarter, you want to think tabletop. You should at all times be able to rock this and then you're going to place it on your index finger and what you're going to do is you're going to pinch and flop it over your middle finger. And there you go. Flop. And then and the right. same thing. You're going to walk it down. So here's the part that's a little bit tricky. When you get to the end, I'm going to kind of nudge in with my ring finger just enough to get it pinched and you're sort of going to give a big enough gap that it'll slide through your pinky and ring but, but notice your thumb is down here like a conveyor belt. You're essentially gonna set it on your thumb, and now look at this. So oh, it's balanced out. on the thumb, and the thumb's gonna act as a conveyor belt, coming right back, and then it's going to start the whole thing over again. Setting it on the first, rolling it on the second, rolling it on the third, taking it through the gap, <laughs> conveyor belt it back. If you do this with a rhythm, it starts to look better and better. It's one of those things, you're gonna do a lot of dropping. In fact, when you're training, you might as well lean down so that you reduce the amount of time because you're gonna drop a lot of quarters this way. This is the kind of thing you could do while you're watching a movie. It doesn't take a lot of your brain power. Oh. Okay, so you're having trouble with the end part, right? All right, so so get to the end, get, get all the way on that last finger. Before you enter the underground, you wanna have your thumb down here, ground. ready to go. And you'll notice what's happening is I'm not letting it slide and fall between my pinky and ring finger. Instead, my pinky is kind of grasping it at the top and like bottom that. there. Okay. You see that? Oh, there it is. And there you are. Right, right. Stop, 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 stop. Pull it down. And you notice you have a little bit of a grip on it with your pinky. Yeah. And I you're just kind of setting it, it the... on top of your thumb. I, I screwed it. You got it right and I screwed it up. Well done. Set it on top around. Ah! He's got it. <laughs> well done. Quarter rolling is one of those things that you can do for yourself. And it can clearly be for your own benefit. But if you want to create a moment that pops, learn how to spin a card on your single finger. So let's say you get to a moment where you find somebody's card. You can just flip it over. But if you want to give it a little bit of an extra bump, you can add this little flourish where you pull out the one card and you spin it on your finger fingertip before you reveal it to be their card. First thing you want to do is get like a credit card, hotel key card, or something with a little bit of heft. And I find that getting a little bit of moisture on my middle finger helps out to find that middle spot. First, everybody show me that you can balance it, right? Good. Now, both your thumb and your index finger are going to reach forward and kind of pull one part of it towards you. And don't, don't try to get a big spin. Just try to get it to switch sides. It's balanced on my middle finger there, yeah. right? I'm grabbing with both my index finger and my thumb at the same time, as if it's a hand. So I'm doing exactly this motion, yeah. just with the same hand is all. First, just try to get it to do a 180, like that. And you'll notice that after that 180 turn, your finger is slightly off center. As you practice that over and over again, 
you'll learn to keep your finger right in the middle. You'll also notice there's a bit of an upward toss motion. You're just sort of lifting your finger just a bit. So by using a thick card like this, you'll have more stability. What part of your middle finger are you using? The top? Uh, the pad? I, I'm using just above the pad. Somewhere in between the tip of the finger and the pad, it seems to be the right spot for me. You're gonna kick it forward, you're gonna lift your hand at the same time, and it's not quite like you're throwing it, but it's just enough to make it lighter. Dude, yeah, you've got it down, Chad. Yeah, I think I'm getting it. Once you get it down and you're able to do 180s over and over and over again, then you're ready to start trying with the playing card. Oh, you've moved, you've moved on to a card. I, I only, just because I was wondering if the, if the weight of this was slowing it down. Well, and in fact, that's why I recommend starting with a thick plastic card right. to train, because then when you switch to a card, it's much, much easier. You'll notice that these outlaws, they have this radial pattern on the back, which makes it pretty easy to find that sweet spot in right. the middle. You're able to give it a nice, slow, luxurious oh, wow. spin like that, right? And you'll notice that less is more. The less you do, the more precise everything feels. One way people make a mistake is by going too far off to the side. They're trying to grab from out here. That's jogging everything all sideways. Oh, I Instead, think I the closer to the middle yeah, everything happens. I just tried that. Then all of a sudden you're, you're going from the center of gravity where all the stability is. <gasps> Nice. Holy <laughs> and finally, nothing says I was clearly just teleported here from a riverboat casino in the 1800s like cutting a deck with one hand. Don't pull out any bad boy. Show it to all the people at home. Don't let me see it. Putting it right on top, and I'm going to lose it by shuffling in the deck not once, not twice, but 37,000 times. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to pour myself a beer. Hold this kind of sideways. And while I pour myself a beer, I'm going to find your card. What was your card? The five of clubs. Now, the tough thing is getting a good pour while you do the one-handed cut and you pull it around. What was your card again? Five of clubs. Five of clubs, and did I get it? Oh, oh that's it, that's it. Yeah. Now we did an episode of Scam School a while back called Controlled Cards, where we taught how to control a card from the top of the deck down to the bottom. When we actually control the card, we're gonna have their card on top, but the first time we're only gonna peel off just the top card. Okay. Then we do, we do the rest exactly the way you did. You keep dropping on top, Dropping on top, dropping on top, dropping on top, until you've gone through the whole deck. When you want to keep a card on the bottom, if you pinch with your thumb and your fingers, as you lift up, it'll keep their card on the bottom as you shuffle. So you can actually shuffle as much as you want, and their card will always stay right there on the bottom. The hardest part of this trick is doing the one-handed cut. This is a flourish called the Charlier cut or the one-handed cut. And it looks fancy, but it's actually really easy to pull off. With your left hand, make a little Pac-Man, right? And then you shoot him and he's dead like this. And instead of putting a coin in his eye, you put the deck in his <laughs> eye to send him across the river sticks, right? Okay. Now when you do this, you wanna have the tops of your fingers just barely over this edge. Same thing with the thumb on this side. You wanna pull enough of your thumb back that half of the deck drops down just like so. You're set like this, you're in the Pac-Man position, you're gonna let the bottom half drop down. You're gonna use these three, you're gonna hold on to the block, but your index finger is going to push it up like a hinge. Once you get in the TP position, you're still trying to hold it as two blocks. Then, this is the only tricky part, you're going to let your index finger push this block back just long enough for the first block to fall down underneath it. And now it's resting on my index finger. And this is good, you actually did something natural, you used your chest to kind of correct with. When you're learning, that's a good thing to do because it keeps everything in blocks. Mm -hmm. Now remember, it should be an A, you don't want an L or a T, you want the letter A. And then once that lips over, I want you to rotate your wrist up so you transform this A as this drops down, you transform it into a V. So you want that V, once you have a V, it's very easy to let your fingers go over that lip and drop the cards on it. Once the cards dropped on it, if you, it's important now that you don't pinch with your thumb because mm -hmm. if you pinch with your thumb, it'll spread the cards in a fan. You don't want that. So instead, keep that thumb off of it and just use the pad, the friction on the pads of your fingers to pull out one card and once it's most of the way out, you can actually just flip it right over to reveal their card. If you have been watching any scam school in the last five years, you know that we loves us domain.com specifically because they let us do ridiculous comedy sketches that have nothing to do with their product and we have free reign. We have been all over the map with these. But the most important thing is that they always have a few simple messages. Of course, domains are fast, easy, reliable with our friends over at domain.com. You get top level domains, you get 99.99% .99 uptime and reliable hosting and most importantly, say it with me kids, 15% off with promo code SCAMSCHOOL. Also, thank you for letting us do ridiculous sketches. You're the best. <laughs>
Okay, now we're in weird territory. Yes, these are definitely technically openers, but also we have a reputation on Scam School of sort of saying, don't try this at home with a wink and a nod. These next two are like legit, don't try this at home. However, because I am a hypocrite, I have definitely used these to attract attention at the bar. Sorry. You start off with a, uh, with a, a four and a half inch nail. This is only four inches long, but you actually, you line it up there. Jesus. In the uh, nasal cavity here. And uh, it's actually gonna go inside the maxillary sinus and we're gonna get some good sound effects here too, Lizzie. We have a doctor in the... This. Oh, whoa. And now I like that the little That looks extremely toast. real. <laughs> yeah, grab the tip. And then, what would happen if I gave it one last little push? We would not be friends anymore. That's what would happen. Okay, well, All I'm right. not gonna do that. Okay, good, here we go. Pull it out slow. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's oh. really you, slick. Like, you can feel it, right? You can feel it's it. slimy. People say, well, what the heck is that? That's not really a bar trick, but the truth is, I actually bust that out at bars quite a bit. Most places don't have nails, but they will have cocktail drink stirs. Your nasal cavity, it's not just a hole, right? You've got a flap of skin over it. This is the flap of skin, and you want to go whoop, like that. You want to drag it across that bottom layer. You'll feel it go in and back. Which, is there a, a, a nostril that's better? Go I go left. You want to think of it as dragging it along it the bottom of your feels really weird. Yeah. It's kind of stopping it. It hurts a lot. I'm gonna actually do it to you. There it is! There it is! It feels weird, but it doesn't hurt as much. There it is! The human freaking rockhead! Okay. There's two dudes with Q-tips in there. Whatever, guys. You want to join our gang? <laughs> <laughs> Am I going in at a good angle here? Yeah, no, I don't know. How many times do I There you go. There you go. Ow. Ow, I think it stopped. <laughs> I feel like I hit walls or it was getting tighter. Yeah, it, well, it's not a big opening. Has yeah, your nose widened after years of nose <laughs> Actually, it is. I'm not gonna lie. I think it, it feels like it's hitting my brain. No, but that's it, though. I'm gonna get so sued. I'm gonna, this is, no. Just please, no, don't, don't. Please, don't. Eating glass light bulbs has been a staple of the American Science Show for a long time. A lot of people think it's a trick. They think there's no possible way. They make up idiot things like it's candy light bulbs. There's no such thing as candy light bulb. Flatly, let me state that I don't encourage anybody to try this. Uh, except for us. Well, except for these guys. Because they're learning under a professional, right? Most of the compact fluorescents, the fluorescents, they all include terrible chemicals that are deadly for you or whatever. Incandescent bulbs, though, you can get them totally clear, and they're nothing but pure glass and a filament in there, a tungsten filament. The ones that are incandescent nowadays, the frosting on the inside is either like synthetic silica, which is like a, a powder, which you shouldn't inhale because you can get uh, silica poisoning in the lungs, or it's, uh, I believe it's pronounced kaolin, but it's like a clay. <laughs> Do you like this? We'll grab this. this big old juicy guy right there. You like that? No. <laughs> No, I do not, here, Brian Brushwood. The bar just got deadly quiet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Why do I hang out with you? Why do I hang out with you? We should call it idiot control. <laughs> You're a son of a bitch. <laughs> you are a son of a bitch. What? <laughs> Whoa. All right, are you ready to learn this? No. Yeah. This is for you. Not for, not for you guys. The whole thing this thing is based on is how brittle the glass is and how if you're very careful with your chomping motion. Remember, glass works in a slicing motion. If I were to take this piece of glass and slice it down, yes. you could cut a carotid artery and all that kind of crap, right? But at this moment, it's very sharp, but it gets less sharp the more you crunch it. Keep in mind, the beach, all that sand, that is broken glass. All sand is just glass that's been broken enough that it's rounded up into sand. That's very so the goal is for you to transform this sharpened glass yeah. into sand inside it's your mouth. Zen. Let's see, we'll take this piece right here. With your teeth, you're gonna crunch straight down. You'll notice like already all these pieces have been broken up a bunch and you're yeah. gonna crunch down, yeah. you're gonna crunch down. How yeah. do you know when to stop crunching? You will actually feel the pieces getting smaller and smaller and smaller until finally 
it does start to feel like sand. It's not like you're chewing a cud because that's gonna have it doing side to side. You want no side to side. Everything's just gotta be like, like Pac-Man, like chomp, chomp, chomp. And you're gonna discover some of it's gonna get into your gums or whatever. Whatever you do, don't sweep your tongue around because again, slice, slice, slice. Any right. kind of motion. Just kind of, you're gonna, you're gonna push it in a position. What do you mean push? Slowly, like you're rolling it. And I, I wish I could describe it any better than this. You will intuitively understand. Just remember, don't swipe across the glass. Keep chomping until it's all sand. If you do cut your mouth, you may bleed a little bit. Uh, I've only cut my mouth once in, in like 20 years of doing this. And that was a case where I was dumb and I was like, oh, it's stuck over here. And I swiped and I, you know, it's embarrassing to bleed on stage. It should feel very That's intuitive. It's embarrassing. Imagine this is your molar. You're gonna put it in your molar yeah. and just kind of crunch straight down on it okay. and just keep crunching. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. It will feel like hard tortilla chips. Like all chips. the way back, right? Yeah, there you go. You want it so your molars are on, on it. So just, in fact, you can even hold it when you bite down at first. The dude again. Do you feel it? Now you can tell already which pieces are broken down into sand, which pieces still need to be broken. Mm -hmm. Keep on going. Yes, and it's amazing because you can actually feel and hear that sound. People are freaking out back here. This is amazing. There are like pieces that are on my tongue. How okay. do I get them more towards the side? Gently kick them over. You can manipulate the glass, but again, just treat the glass with your tongue the way you would with your fingers. You don't go wherever and slide it all around. Gotcha. Are you feeling it though? Uh-huh. I just want to be very thorough, Brian. That's fine. And in fact, that's the way you should be. Weirdly, the more you chew it, the safer it becomes because you're, pul you're pulverizing it into glass. Okay, now, when it comes to the technique to swallow, again, you don't want the glass sliding on you anywhere, right? Uh-huh. So what you do is you take a mouthful of liquid, you'll swish it around, and it, as long as everything's turbulent in motion with you swishing around, it's all kind of floating all around, uh -huh. and then it'll kind of settle, and you can swish it, it'll float, and then settle. While it's floating, you want to tilt your head back and swallow all at once, and you're gonna repeat that a couple of times, so you should have it all. So again, swish it all around, there you go, there you go. Lean straight back. Okay. You just ate MF in glass, son. Wow. Okay, fine. We're done. We're done with the dangerous stuff, right? Uh, guess what? Here's some stuff everybody can do. Everybody who's old enough to drink beer. I guess still not everybody. <laughs> Cheesy beer gags, including one that was taught to me by my dad all the way back when I was in second grade. They're still great. They're still great. Come on, fellas. Let's have a beer. Hey guys, check this out. <laughs> hey man, enjoy a beer. This one's on me. I just thought of something. Watch closely. For those of you guys interested in that little levitating bottle gag, all you gotta do is make sure your fingers are dry and that the bottle's not so cold it has condensation on it. Put one finger on top, one finger on the side, and if you pinch together, you'll be able to get just enough grip to actually lift it up off the table. You can have this nice new shiny $1 bill if you can figure out a way to take it out from underneath this beer bottle without touching the bottle, without using anything but your hands, and without letting the bottle fall over. <laughs> nah, that's pretty good actually. That's not how the gag works though. We also have that moment where, where, where the challenge and he lifts it and puffs it out. Like after the credits, there's this moment that Tom Merritt grabs uh, the, the bill and tosses it up and pulls it out and the, and the thing stands on there and we're all shocked. And then you hear, uh, you hear Jason go, 
the flowers are still standing. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, remember, all of these are just openers. You have to have good material to perform after this, but this is a fantastic way to get people's attention. And most importantly, I want to know what other best ofs you guys want to see. Hit me up down in the comments. Tell me which one of these is your favorite. And of course, we should be best friends over at twitter.com slash schwood. There is no C in schwood. All of this stuff is in the two scam school books. And most importantly, you got to follow our new adventure. That baby faced beauty that you met nearly 10 years ago. That's my buddy Jason Murphy. And nowadays, we're on a quest to become the ultimate gentleman, warrior, and scoundrel over at the Modern Rogue. It looks like this. In fact, you can make the argument, and many have, that the first candidate to make it out of the Republican or Democratic Party that wasn't either blessed by the party or blessed by the special interests that dominate uh, the party, be it donors or organized labor or something like that, was Jimmy Carter. So wait, you're saying- That dude's still alive right now! So you're saying this is how long back this goes. This is, is that all of it. Everybody before Jimmy Carter was somebody who was elected by a bunch of uh, cigar smoking dudes in the back room yes. who all agreed this yeah. is gonna be the guy and he's gonna Tammany win. Tammany Hall, right? I mean, even after okay, that I don't, was even, I don't even know what that means. What gotcha. is Tammany Hall? All right. Okay. Keep in mind, 